it almost freaked me out a bit. And then she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You understand that you have money. You've already been putting away all these years to pay for these. Do you not understand? Like it's money you don't even use every single like, like paycheck. Like this doesn't affect your day to day. This is actually going to help you grow your money. I'm just like, so you're telling me I can pay for these and grow my money and it actually doesn't affect my everyday whatsoever? And she goes, no. My daughter is self-sustaining. Mm. She, she may not have asked me for money even as a child for things, but she has not asked me for money to help her pay rent or groceries or any of those things, right? Um, so that's great. And it just makes me feel um, relief you know no, not because she's not asking no. me money but because she can take care of herself yeah right and that she doesn't have to um, maintain being in any toxic relationships right that she doesn't have to mm. right that's, she that's, doesn't have to stay yeah. at a job that she doesn't have to mm. because she needs the money mm. right like how many how many how many adults have we talked to that end up staying in relationships or stay at a job that they don't like because they needed the money? You know, when you were a, um, a kid or maybe in your teens or your early 20s and you'd sit around with your friends, you'd play this game. Hey, what would you do if you were president or prime minister? Well, I want to start out by telling you what I would do. If I was president or prime minister, I would sit at every maternity ward in Canada, in the United States, and I'd do two things. I'd hand out a birth certificate, and I'd hand out a contract for life insurance for all the nations, the continent's children. Why would I do that? Well, first off, my name's Cole. This is Life 180. You are a very smart person for tuning in. I have Winnie and Amanja, and actually, I'm not going to answer why I would do that. I'm going to let them. This is a use case. This is living, breathing, real, actual examples of the benefit of doing what I just said. If I ever become president or prime minister, well, you can thank me later. For now, <laughs> let's dive right into it. Winnie, tell me about Cash Smart for Life. Yes, I will. And also, I would definitely vote for you. All right. Great. Imagine, <laughs> would you vote for me? No, I just 100%. got a vote. Two votes. <laughs> <laughs> so Cash Smart for Life, it is a program that um, my daughter and I created to coach parents, to coach their kids, all about cash flow management. Wow. Short and sweet. I love it. So Imagine, how would you describe it? I would describe it as helping parents to really make children comfortable with money and getting them to understand, honestly, the, the feeling around money and just getting them comfortable with it and then just giving them the skills to make life way smoother. And yeah, just giving, giving children the most major tool that everyone needs. I love it. And so if you haven't figured it out, Winnie and Amaja are mother and daughter. Winnie is one of our it, countries in Canada, one of Canada's very first infinite banking practitioners, authorized at the Nelson Nash Institute. She's been doing it for around a decade. And uh, Amaja was born into the power of the infinite banking concept. So many people uh, ask me about my platform to run for prime minister and president. And they kind of go, well, it sounds really great, Cole, but we want to see a, you know, a use case. Let's see some numbers. Well, I've got more than numbers. We actually have Amanja here, who has been born into the stewardship of this program and has been mentored by her mom, not just as a good human being, but also carrying the torch of, of financial stewardship. And I remember when the very first time I met Amanja about a year ago, having what was coming out of her mouth was what I had thought it would do if, again, every child had the opportunity for whole life. So good job, Winnie, on coaching your daughter. What a, what a remarkable thing. So I would just love to hear from you guys, just kind of the, the process. And Maja, let's, let's start with you. Let's start, you know, what did it, what, what does it look like in your day? How do you compare? This is probably the thing that blew me away the most is when you're amongst your peers and how old are you? Do you mind telling us how old you are? 22. 22. Okay. And you've been practicing infinite banking for how long do you remember back? When did infinite banking first come into your life? Um, since the age of four. Okay. Since the age of four. Wow. Um, and 
let me just, so I started coaching her on cash flow management at the age of four. Infinite banking didn't come in until age 11. Okay. Yeah. So, right. So but it does amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess the, the question is, is that, so Amanda, when you are amongst your peers, other 20 young, 20 ish year olds, what's different about you in your conversations? I know I already asked you this question and it was a year ago and I still remember the answer, but what's different about you compared to your friends as it relates to money or just kind of life? Well, I would definitely say that starting in my, even to the age of 18 and now, I have noticed a difference in me significantly compared to all of my peers, just because I moved out of the house and I went around and uh, moved to a couple, couple different places, but um, just more of their behavior around money compared to me, I would say is definitely the biggest Um yeah, I remember from a young age, my mom uh, would always tell me like, you know, you're going to work with money, like you're working with money, it works for you, all these different things. And, and my friends, they almost perceive money as like, they love it when they have a lot of it. But when they don't, they think it's somewhat like evil or like, like stressful, like it's very, there's this whole feeling around money. And for me, it's just, it just kind of like comes and goes. And no matter how much money comes in or no matter how much money goes out, I just know that I'm just paying my way through life. Like it just, it doesn't really affect me emotionally if I have a lot of money or I don't because I just know how to, how to use it. So um, also the phrases, the phrases are probably the biggest thing, like the phrases my friends use. Um, I can't do this. I'm broke. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have enough money to do that because um, I don't get my next paycheck till this and this, or just like, I don't know if I'll have grocery money or all these things, all the phrases that never really comes out of, of my mouth compared to, to theirs. So it's just a lot of, um, a lot of complaining, I would say around the subject of money compared to, compared to me. Wow. I, I love it. And so you know, Winnie, you've installed in your daughter, Manja, uh, what I'm hearing her say is a sense of control and a sense of peace uh, with something that for the most part is very frightening, which is money. I know it was frightening for me uh, up until only a few years ago, truthfully, when I discovered and started implementing the same process. Now I wasn't four, I was probably 44, uh, actually, that's funny. But so Winnie, um, how, how did you do it? Uh, you know, for, for myself, um, in terms of how I ended up coaching my daughter, you know, especially when, when she was four, geez, I was only 30 around. Yeah. No, I was 28. So I'm like, I'm starting to do yeah. the math in my mind. Um, so yeah, so I was just like hovering around the 30, uh, 30 year old mark. And I wasn't quite, I didn't quite figure out money myself at that point yet. But what I did have figured out was what it means to live out on your own. And I moved out on my own quite young when I was 15. And when I had a she was, I was 20, 23, 24. And I think in the back of my mind, I felt like it was my duty to prepare my daughter for being out on her own. And so, and, and it came from the place of, you know, what would I have wanted to know better if I like you know if if I could redo going out on my own again what would I have wanted to know so that I could have like struggled a lot less and you know just made the most of it and so I always had in like you know like everything from like at the age of 10 I was starting to throw her the learner's guide for driving a car it's like hey start studying this now so you can ace your learners <laughs> you know um so when it when it came to money um it was uh, yeah. So I just started coaching her at the age of four. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And was it at the age of four, was it, you were coaching her on, was it the use of, and just as a qualifier, every time in this conversation that we say life insurance, if you're not an advisor watching this, and if you're, uh, somebody who is interested in the infinite banking concept or, you know, leverage life insurance strategies, what have you, every time we say life insurance, we're always referring to specifically designed, uh, cash value life insurance um, mm -hmm. uh, done with the living benefit in mind and the cash benefit in mind. Uh, it, just keep that, keep that in mind 
as we say, life insurance. That's what we're referring to very specifically. So Winnie was, when you were, when Imagine was four, were you coaching her on life insurance? No, I was not. Um, I was not coaching her on life insurance at that point. Um, when I got her first life policy, um, it was at the age of 11. Um, but I was probably studying to become, you know, one of the first infinite banking practitioners here in Canada when she was closer to, you know, nine and 10 years old. Right. And um, so what you know, by the time she was 11, Imagia could 100% explain to you how she was managing her cash flow. In fact, we have a really great little video about that. Um, but when how she started learning about life insurance was actually me practicing when I was uh, working with my colleagues to help, you know, to bring this into the Canadian marketplace, you know, doing the weekend workshops or, or whatever the case may be, my daughter would be the audience, I would be practicing what my my speaking points and what I was going to be sharing with the Canadian public about learning about infinite banking and I would have my daughter listening as my audience it was really fun though because I was going to a project school at the time and my mom was having these powerpoints and I was sitting there and I was listening taking all my you know patients up and then I'd be like listen mom I was really good, but you need to have less words on this PowerPoint. And I remember just like helping her and she'd read and I would like just sit there and like listen. And yeah, I just, I remember all of that. Yeah. <laughs> get to the, get to the point, mom. Is that, was that we were kind of, life insurance is awesome. <laughs> I'm sure there was more to it than that. So cash flow, uh, cash, cash smart for life is a, a business that the two of you own. And it's a, it's a business that you're, you're yeah, promoting. Now, Winnie, you're an infinite banking practitioner. You spend the, the day to day, every hour of the day, meeting with clients, coaching them on um, the, uh, the concept of using life insurance as a, as a very productive strategy. Um, is my far flung running for president handing out, like, am I off base? Like, is that a thing? Like, would, if every child born in Canada had a life insurance contract, like, like Winnie say, mm -hmm. or even at the age of, uh, I think her first contract was at age nine or excuse me, 11. Yes. Right? What would that look like for the world in two or three generations? Well, <clears throat> I will answer your question, but this is, how I'm going to answer it. Um, <laughs> Being that it's it's almost coming up to like um, a dozen years that I've been sharing this with Canadians, the reason a part of the reason why I wanted to share the Cash Smart for Life program um, with the general public is that we can have this amazing strategy, the infinite banking strategy, uh, used as a phenomenal way of creating intergenerational legacy within families and creating a family banking system so that we, our family members never have to see the inside of a bank to borrow money, right? And we can keep more money in our pocket. But it's, if, if, our, if our children have no idea how to value the dollar, if they have no real idea how to have an emotional relationship with money, right from the beginning, how on earth do we expect our kids to know how to keep any of it when we haven't taught them, right? I don't believe that money should be taught in school, okay? Because by the time we get rid of the politics and the minutia of all of the politics uh, of the red tape of what should be taught specifically about money, it's gonna be so watered down. So regardless of whether a parent is good with money or not, with our Cash Smart for Life system, you can hit the ground running with a really great baseline and you can instill your own values of how you want to, you know, you know, your own values around money with your children, you know, but it should be done at the home. And you know what? I, uh, I am so blown by how tight our relationship is, mm. you know, and, and we use and, and money is used to help create that connection versus how, you know, there's a lot of sayings or, that, you know, money can tear families apart, money can tear friendships apart. Well, what if it didn't have to? That is, that is an, an amazing question. And so what I'm hearing you describe is that you have a closer bond with Amanja 
um, because um, money is likely not so confusing or frightening in your relationship. It's likely that, um, you know, like all children, we go to our, our, our parents and ask them for money, but it's likely, I guess, imagine when, when you need say money from mom, when you were younger, or maybe even still today, I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, almost 50 and I feel like I still need to ask my parents for money some days. It feels like an instinct. Um, how, how, how do you describe that when you were going to go to ask money from mom, was it coming from mom or when you were younger or did you know that it was Honestly, coming from? I, I don't really remember ever. Like, of course, when I was like way, way young and like me and my friends wanted to walk to like the, the closest like uh, gas station to get candy maybe, but uh, she started teaching me at the age of four. So me asking my mom for money is not something I, I ever really did. And when I maybe even thought I wanted to, I felt extremely weird about it and awkward. Like I, and to this day, like it is really hard for me to even ask my mom for money. So, you know, now she like. She except like for, except for birthday she, presents or something. Except, except for birthday presents. Um, but it is my birthday. And then, you know, it goes towards something I will. Also, when, when we were speaking, I was thinking of another uh, way that I find I'm very different than my friends that I wanted to bring up as well. With the Cash Smart for Life program and, you know, the infinite banking, I feel um, a lot of stability within my own ability to, like, manage my money, which is something I forgot to mention. I think that's something my friends don't have is they don't feel stability within themselves um, when it comes to like, you know, money or, you know, just even how they're going to do things in their life kind of thing. So I, stability, I think is like one of the biggest uh, things for me. Yeah. That's a, a, be a beautiful way to put it. Um, do you know, Amanda, do you, so when you're accessing money, um, do you take policy loans? And, and if I was to ask you to describe the, the, the kind of the relationship that you have with taking a policy loan or, um, you know, maybe it would be interesting. I know that anyone watching this would love to know the kind of granular details of kind of how does this all work? How do you access the money inside of a life insurance contract? A lot of people don't even know that you can access money that you, you've, you, you've uh, stored away in a life insurance contract. And so between Winnie, I'm sure you're maybe the owner of the policies. Now, Amanjo is kind of the owner of the policies. Unpack your, your banking system and how do you access the money? I'm sure people on a day-to-day -day practical level want to know that. Yeah, well, I've, I've only done it um, a few times for sure. And of course, my mom's there helping me walk through it step by step. She's always the woman I call. <laughs> and um, yeah, mom. And uh <laughs> Yeah, I've never taken a bank loan, so I don't even know the stress that that holds for some people. I've only ever gone through the policies, but the entire process is extremely, um, I don't know. I The entire time my mom has been explaining it and everything, I'm just like pretty amazed of how everything works. And then when I've actually taken the the money from the bank of myself, I was I was quite shocked how easy and then just it definitely motivates you to pay yourself back more than anything and that's like the biggest thing out of our program too is making sure you you pay yourself back like pay yourself uh, okay. it, it, it definitely makes a lot of sense if people would take our program but um yeah, no, you're doing an amazing job unpacking it. And I think that, you know, it, to a lot of people, this whole program and this, this concept is um, very, very foreign. But in, even in the last few years, I haven't been around doing this as long as Winnie has, that's for sure. But even in the last three or four years, you're seeing it become um, much more sticky. People are really attracted to it. And once they get it, they don't go anywhere. They, they stick around and they start to implement it uh, for life because like you, uh, they start to have a different relationship with money and a different relationship with people. So Winnie, when you, when you kind of came to the realization that where were you, what were you doing? Where was that moment where you realized life insurance for kids could do all of these things, get the stewardship that you speak to? What were you already an infinite banking practitioner, a financial advisor at the time? Was it, was it before you became uh, a member of the Nelson Nash Institute? Um, what, what did that look like for you when you hit, when it hit you in the head, wow, life insurance can do this? You know, uh, 
it was probably two years into my practice. Now, like, just get that for just a quick moment. Like now I was surrounded with, um, you know, my colleagues and my mentors and my friends like Jason and, and Richard, you know, and we were all working side by side, uh, learning together how to bring this into the Canadian marketplace, getting, you know, practicing, getting our reps in, in terms of being able to explain this and teach this to others. And so, you know, and th that's who I surrounded with, you know, from like surrounded myself with day in and day out. And even after two years of sharing this with the Canadian public, it like ahas came like, you know, even though I was teaching it, even though I was talking about it, it was, I, I could really feel, I, I can't even believe that this is like happening. Like, I can't believe what I'm doing. This is what I'm sharing with the Canadian public. And it took me two years to really feel the full impact of what I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and that was me in it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, yeah, I, I still really am impressed upon just the number of things, more than a number of things that it could really do. I can see why Nelson called it infinite banking, because there's just infinite amount of ways that you can practice it, infinite amount of ways that you can use it. And as for, you know, the specifics of how easy it is to share this with Amagia. So I started a policy because she was only 11 when I started a policy on her. She, there's no possible way she can own a policy on herself. So for myself, I just made sure I built the contract so that when she turned 18, 21, 25, whatever, there was um, that we could create more policies for her. And it was so good. I'm so glad that I did because when she turned 18, it was her first opportunity that I could say, now I could have, I could have taken that flexible guaranteed insurability option and I could have owned a banking system number two on my daughter but when she was 18 because I had watched her manage and control her money responsibly not blowing it I offered her the opportunity to own her own banking system at age 18 right and so she owned her very first banking system at age 18 because she took over ownership of that and from one of her cash flow management accounts that she's been putting money into since she was four, you know, she already actually had the money to start a banking system, right? It was just, it was an opportunity waiting for her to practice that. Um, and as for a couple, like, you know, what, what has Imagine taking out a policy loan for? There's been um, a, the most recent item that I'll, I, I can share that I can remember right in the right in this moment is, uh, you know, to help pay for taxes, right? So she had to pay for taxes anyways, but why not do it from a place where her money will continue to compound? Totally, I, right? I mean, I love it. So, what a great use case. Yes, and so this, the funny thing is like, talking about like nitty gritty bare details though, about how easy it could be, it's, Honestly, depending on which insurance company, it's one page, one page that you fill out. She signed it. You know, I emailed it to her. I sent it to her. And then I sent it back for her because I have all the technology to do it. Right. So there's, then, the three actors in, in the play that you're describing are the owner of the contract or the banking system or the life insurance contract. In this conversation, as we're talking about a banking system, we're also referring to a life insurance contract, as I described earlier. So you have the three actors in the play and on, on any contract, you have three, three characters. You have the owner, you have the beneficiary, and then you have the, the life insured. Now, to make it very granular in this case, so you started out, Winnie, with your first policy at our banking system on your daughter at 11 years old. Uh, Amanja was the uh, life insured, I'm assuming. Uh, you were the owner, and I'm likely you were the beneficiary in, in this case of the, of the policy. Likely. Is that fair to say? Okay. Yeah. So then, and then, and then at a certain age, was it 18 or so? You gave that policy by filling out one piece of paper and you handed the ownership of that banking system now over to Amanja. Yes. And yes, and to be fair, in Canada, you can't uh, you can't do that at age eighteen anymore. If you have that guaranteed insurance, it's earliest age is twenty one now. Right. But I got grandfathered into an older contract, so sure. just if any parent was 
expecting that you could do it at age 18. You can't now. Yeah. Hey, and you know, we have a, we have a lot of people that uh, love yeah. in this day and age are more educated all the time. And you're talking about a rider and let's just go ahead and unpack that. If I, I think it'd be great to explain, um, you know, what the, uh, that guarantee guaranteed insurability rider actually does, what it costs in, relative to the program and, and the benefits of it. Yeah. So it's an option you can get when you purchase a child's policy and uh, you definitely want to get it because it will lock in future insurability without having to ever medically have your child medically qualify for, for, for it. And, you know, we don't have a crystal ball in terms of, you know, what will happen to our child's health. I mean, it, it, sometimes it's not just health, but sometimes, you know, an accident can happen that could also impact the insurability. So we, would, we just want to make sure when we truly understand like the power, the financial power of you know, making sure we're locking in as many options as possible for a kid, you want to add the flexible guaranteed insurability option onto the contract so that in the future, when that child turns to that particular age, then at that moment, at that age, you can actually start a whole other policy um, on your child. And, you know, if they're an adult by then, then they can own it. Like I passed on the ownership to her. Or if they're not doing so hot financially, then you can just keep it for yourself until they behave. <laughs> so. Totally. And that's, that's so well said. And, and, and it, the, the amount of flexibility inside of these contracts, yeah. these banking systems is just absolutely amazing. And so, Amanda, when you were handed over that contract, now that you're the owner of this, uh, this asset, that, that's what it is. It's, a, it's an asset. And I always like to say to people, what do you want your asset to look like? If you do like a, a tick box or a check box and you line a whole bunch of assets and you look at, all, you list all the things that you would like it to do. It's pretty amazing when you look at the, the, the asset of whole life insurance, it does more than anything else, right? And you can compare that to gold. You can compare that to Bitcoin. You compare that to houses and a whole bunch of other things that the government likes you to try and buy. But that said, Amaja, what did it feel like when you were now the owner of this asset? Well, firstly, um, it was pretty amazing once my mom started, she had to explain it to me a couple times, of course, um, but how much these things go actually like quite hand in hand, the program and these um, policies, because when she was first bringing it up to me, I was shocked that, you know, she had taken these policies out on me, but also then she said she was giving them to me. And I was like, okay, so you're telling me that this is like more expenses that I have to add in to my life. And it was definitely, it almost freaked me out a bit. And then she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You understand that you have money. You've already been putting away all these years to pay for these. Do you not understand? Like it's money you don't even use every single like, like paycheck. Like this doesn't affect your day to day. This is actually going to help you grow your money. I'm just like, so you're telling me I can pay these and grow my money and it actually doesn't affect my everyday whatsoever and she goes no and so <laughs> started and it definitely took me a while to learn these policies and what they actually do and I started using them more recently um figuring out more how it works and uh yeah now now it's pretty amazing um what it feels like to just like I said before have all this stability um, no matter what happens to me and just, yeah, I, I just have this whole, t my mom used to call them lifeboats. I just like lifeboats. She used to on a whiteboard, like draw these little pictures with these little waves and like, I don't, it was super funny. But I have videos of her trying to teach them to me. Um, and yeah, I just have probably never felt like my life, like no matter what I do, no matter what, um, sports I try, like I'm pretty much set up for anything or things I want to do in the future. Uh, I'm just excited to be you know, almost older and like see how they grow and also know that I'm like helping to support and teach my friends maybe about this and help help their lives because I mean if it wasn't for my mom I would have no idea this even existed. Wow. All right. Just to earmark something. So for you parents that are watching this or grandparents watching this, I don't know how old your kids are. Your kids may be uh, babies. Uh, they may be uh, toddlers um, in their, their terrible twos, three, who, adolescents, who knows? Um, here is a mother and daughter. Here is, here is a manja, Winnie's daughter, who 
and you heard it here first, hasn't come, hasn't come, come to mom more than one on a couple of typical occasions and asking for money. You know, I, I think that's really something to, to earmark. And because Amanja has been born with the stewardship at four years old, understanding the relationship and her relationship amongst her peers with money is totally different. I mean, this is really something to behold. And, and this is, you know, for me, what it, you know, why I'm running for president based on, on this story. So uh, prime minister as well, for that matter. Now, um, cash smart for life. Let, let's dive a little bit into the business act uh, aspect of it. Um, how can people find you? Who is your, 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 your primary target? Because you cash smart for life has a generational approach to business, much like the two of you are generational. And I personally find it so authentic um, how you're, the foundation of your business is built. Um, the two of you are, are generational. This is generational, what we're looking at right here. Your business is built uh, for generational success stewardship, I keep calling it. Um, you know, how, how does it, what, who is the perfect client for you? How would you describe that client in as much detail um, as you can? And, and who needs you? Who, who, who needs to hear this message uh, more than anybody else? So I would say that our perfect client at this moment are parents that have kids uh, between the ages of five to 12, I would say, like as long as your uh, kid can read, um, you know, and can more or less understand all like everything you're saying, full sentences, (laughs) it's a great time to start. And we cap it at around 12, um, you know, at this moment, mainly because in this particular age group, they're so open. They're so open. And it's, you know, pretty much before a lot of hormones hit, you know, there's, um, yeah, it, I think once the hormones hit, it's sometimes a little harder to integrate (laughs) while, yeah, just while the hormones are involved. That that makes a lot of sense. So five, somewhere around five to about 12 years old, is the, is the sweet spot. And one thing that I know is on a lot of people's minds is, you know, like, what does it cost? Like, how, how, how do you fund a policy? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll speak to, I have 11 uh, of these policies. I have 11 whole life insurance policies, infant banking. The idea of the infant banking concept is never one policies. It's a group of policies. In my mind, more is more. Um, money tends to follow that. I start early, more is more. The, you know, these kind of slogans, these sayings. Imagine you were talking about slogans and sayings. I mean, I love that. Um, so, you know, how, how much can, you know, what, what, what is a, what, what's the, is there a, is it too small of a policy? If you, can you pay monthly? Can you pay yearly? Is, is $50 a month? Uh, is that a thing? hundred dollars a month, 10,000, what does it cost to start capitalizing a, a banking system? Oh my gosh. I think, you know, that could be saved for a whole other um, podcast and interview to really demonstrate with, uh, you know, using a, a story and some really great visuals. Um, you know, yeah, absolutely can start at $50 a month if you'd like, and it could go all the way up to, it, it just really depends, right? Like every family has its own fingerprint in terms of what can actually be done and what is accomplished. And it's really relative to that family. Um, and, you know, when I first started with Imagia, all I could do was $140 a month. That's how I started, right? You know, um, tap that into, you know, you know, almost 12 years later. I mean, I myself am, am you know, up, in, up into the, you know, around the 15 policies range, right? So, but, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where um, it, it, it just requires a customized conversation, but in terms of cost, in terms of the cash smart for life program, I mean, the, the highlight is, is to ultimately get a policy for your child, but it's our program, the program that we specifically teach the parents to coach their kids. There is a cost to that. Now, um, imagine I are getting ready to launch our program, uh, probably into early 2022, Um, you know, and we're still debating what that cost would be, whether we're going to keep it live, what would it cost if we're going to do it evergreen? So, uh, I don't know. We, we haven't quite, we haven't quite nailed all of those details out yet. 
But in the meantime, uh, people can definitely consult with you and uh, speak with you, uh, find you down here, over there, up somewhere uh, in uh, uh, this uh, our, our channel, and we'll make sure that uh, that that one hundred percent will happen. And obviously, we encourage uh, that. And um, so, just before we wrap up, I just wanted to kind of pass it back to you. Is there anything that I'm missing? Anything that's you know burning desires that you know that, that the world needs to know about? life insurance for kids or uh, the uh, cash smart for life or anything at all? What's, what's on your minds? Um, well, cash smart for, the cash smart for life program where we're coaching parents to coach the kids, that can be worldwide. You know, that, that's, that's something we can share anywhere around the world. And like, it, that's universal. Um, the life insurance though, however, um, it's something that is more limited to um, U.S. and for Canadians. Right. I specifically deal with Canadians, but do have uh, colleagues uh, in the U.S. that that I know uh, who could really take care of the families in the U.S. So you can still reach out to myself, and then I, I can I can make good referrals to you guys. Um, what else? That's really interesting, um, Winnie. So you were just saying, I just want to pick up on that a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of what it is that we do on this channel and also, um, you know, in our in our professional lives is about the infinite banking concept. Uh, it's about, you know, leverage cash values, life insurance, whole life insurance strategies. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, what I loved what you were saying, though, is, is that uh, cash smart for life is not completely contingent on life insurance, necessarily whole life insurance or the infinite banking concept, it's a tool that is universal because there are countries in the world where the type of life insurance that we're speaking of is just not what many actually there's just not available. And so it is a, a, more, a much more you have a much more macro view uh, to this solution. That's that's very interesting. Is that fair to say? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, that's that that's fantastic. And then so with Cash Smart for Life, you're not beholden then to see the results and the success that is a testament of a manager um, just by using the product of life insurance or the concept of infinite banking. So that's mm -hmm. that's very encompassing. I love that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, for sure, I mean to the the sweet spot and like the cherry on the top is having having the life insurance, like the specifically designed life insurance contract to really supplement as you're a kid's age, right? So mm. that, you know, it's a way to help keep more of the money in the family throughout life, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that I do definitely wanted to share was that um, what we didn't talk about is that uh, as, a, as a parent, knowing that, um, you know, Amash has been out on her own now for four years. My daughter is self-sustaining. Mm. she she may not have asked me for money even as a child for things but she has not asked me for money to help her pay rent or groceries or any of those things right um so that's great and it just makes me feel um <sighs> relief <sighs> you know no, not because she's not no. asking me money but because she can take care of herself yeah right and that she doesn't have to um, maintain being in any toxic relationships, right? That she doesn't have to, mm. right? That's, she that's, doesn't have to stay yeah. at a job that she doesn't have to mm. because she needs the money, mm. right? Like how many, how, many, how many adults have we talked to? that end up staying in relationships or stay at a job that they don't like because they needed the money. You needed the support, the fear of yeah. leaving. How am I going to buy this? How am I going to pay for that? I have to stay in this relationship or relationship, meaning job or kind of spousal or, you know, intimate or non friend, because yeah. the, the, the risk of me not being able to live a certain lifestyle or pay a certain bill or have a certain thing. So I'm just going to put up with it and live in torment. It's powerful. Right. And, and here's, here's the other thing that I really have a burning desire to share is that um, Amaja is uh, not at this point in her life. She's not an academic child. Okay. She is living on her own, living a better life on a minimum wage job. Okay. So 
It's not about how much money you have, like Robert Kiyosaki said. It's about your ability to keep it and how long you can keep it for. She knows how to play the game, right? So it makes no difference if you're making a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, two million dollars a year if you have no idea how to manage it. Wow, I, I got that's a mic drop right there. I mean that that is a that is a the two things you just said, right? Imagine like. That is a beautiful thing, Winnie, what you just said yeah. about the position that you put your daughter into in life and the, 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 the identification of you know, her autonomy that she has uh, in relationships because of the, the, um, the lack of fear around money and how empowering that is. I mean, this, this is heavy stuff, guys. I mean, I'm really, really amazed. So anyways, enough. Imagine, what are your thoughts on what your mom just said? <laughs> that is heavy stuff. That is cool. Honestly, this entire process of me growing up and actually not even realizing what the what the understanding I like have of money. I honestly I didn't even fully realize it until like these years when we really dug deep and mm. even realized that money has affected even my personality and my confidence like as a person. And I'm glad I can give my mom uh, relief. <laughs> That's good and um honestly yeah it it makes me bummed out in a way that I really wish I could have these conversations with more people my own age of them thriving and living their best uh life because it, it is such a bummer to see so many of my peers so stuck um and I'm just extremely thankful for everything my mom has set up. And I just think it's amazing how she honestly came from not knowing or even having the skill of managing money to somehow becoming the way she is today. And then also raising a daughter who um, has so much knowledge that she's just passing down to me. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, what a, what a beautiful thing this is. And I, I, I'm so glad that I asked, you know, what burning desires and what you, because the last thing that we just spoke about here was definitely the most powerful thing. And, you know, like a lot of people in the financial industry, I get caught up in the product side of it. And as much as I'm coached and, and told not to get caught up in the product side of it, I still uh, tend to, I tend to get critical with numbers. And, you know, we were talking about riders and, and various things, but the message that I'm taking away from the two of you today is to uh, be courageous and, and start early and, and be consistent uh, in it. And, and, that, and that's a beautiful thing. And Amanda, you know, just before we wrap up, I, and again, I think I, I don't think we can hear it enough, is that when you're out there speaking to your friends and you're, you're describing your life as it relates to, say, money versus, versus them, do they look at you different? Do they admire you? Um, do they want to be like you? Um, I've had this only a few I've had a couple friends um they want to know how I do it and then you know uh I've tried to help them but it is extremely hard to learn good money habits over top of bad ones that they've been spending their money for years so no matter what I teach it doesn't stick like it it doesn't stick especially you know we're in our 20s we like to go to the bar we like to do this and they think it affects them very drastically in their everyday life when um, I think it's very hard for them to look at the bigger picture. Hmm. Not saying that the program that I use diminishes me from having fun because that's just not the truth at all. <laughs> it's just not. Um, but I, I'm almost getting lost in the question because I'm just like feeling so much of you're, just- <laughs> You're nailing it. You are not lost. You are, you are owning the question. Okay. Oh, right. I remember the question now. Um, I think at first, cause I don't, this is not something I'm just straight out about. Like if I'm starting to become friends with someone, it's not like right away. I'm just like, oh yeah, by the way, like I know all this about money and <laughs> I know this, you know, you could learn a lot from me. It's not like, I, I, I'm not, I don't even, people don't even know that I'm good with money until they start to become close with me or they're just like, how are you doing this? And you're not like stressed or I'm not commenting like they are. And uh, I've definitely inspired some of my friends for sure to take the path that I am taking because they are inspired by the way that money doesn't affect me as it affects them. Um, but I still, I still have so much to, I, I want all my friends to do good and I want to be able to do the things that I want to do with them without them uh, 
being broke right after or being, you know, it would just be so nice to have a collective amount of friends that are just money doing like money well, money positive, money money good. So nice. <laughs> money good. Money great. I so love it. Super like well, I'm so- what a powerful way to, to to wrap this up. And I mean I've just I've learned so much. I'm inspired. Um, I'm gonna take you guys on my campaign uh bus and we'll go around and we'll we'll have the the walking living breathing use case of you know mother and daughter and you know winnie uh congratulations and and you know and thank you for uh the work that you've done as a parent and being courageous to dive into um, the fears that most parents have uh, around around financial literacy because you know the financial literacy is a horse that's been really um, that, 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 that horse is rode off into the sunset and it's, we've tried it 47% of North Americans are $200 away or less from insolvency, um, right now. And they're, they're frightened and they're not in a good place, uh, with the relationship with money. And there's no real secret. And, you know, why my stand for president or prime minister would start and end and begin uh, with children is due to the fact that that's really all we can do. We may have to push it forward a generation. And so I think this message today is really about encouraging parents, you know, maybe whole life insurance is a solution, but maybe it's just learning yourself a little bit, getting a little bit uncomfortable, getting a coach, plugging into people like Winnie, plugging into people like Amanda, hearing their story, watching this video over and over and start with your kids early. Winnie, uh, Winnie started with Amanda at four and had her first policy. We obviously, we obviously promote whole life insurance as a, as a product or a tool to get to the goal, but it's not the be all and end all. It really begins and ends with the stewardship and the passion to, uh, to dive in. So thank you uh, both sincerely, um, just completely blown away. I know that you love this video. There are some buttons down here we're gonna ask you to push. There's a subscribe button. Please go ahead and do that. Um, please give us a thumbs up. Give Amaja and Winnie a thumbs up as well uh, while you're at it. And uh, please look at the links below on how to plug in to uh, Cash Smart for life.